Good morning, this is Smitty at Victorian Strength Club and I'm gonna make a video on conjugate programming for strongman. This is gonna be a four part series with this one being uh, about the dynamic effort lower body and then I'll do dynamic effort upper body, max effort lower body and max effort upper body. As well, um, this is easily the questions that I get the most uh, through Insta and other social media is how to make uh, conjugate work for strongman and I've been doing it for about five years now, four or five years, and since opening the gym and having an array of athletes um, following the same programming and seeing how it works, I firmly believe it is the best way to train for strongman. There's plenty of videos out there about how speed work doesn't work and conjugate doesn't work for strongman, and that's fantastic. That's good for those people. I'll never fight those people on that. Uh, but in the videos that I've watched on them, I think they get a few things wrong with what max effort work is, what rotating exercises means, and what exactly speed work means. So, a few assumptions before starting the video. I'm not going to treat you like a baby or an idiot. I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about conjugate and west side. I'm going to assume that you know a few things maybe about Prilipin's chart and uh, rep ranges, percentages, and things like that. So. Hopefully if you've stumbled upon this video, it's because you just need a bit of further information. If you're anything like me, the dumbed down videos, you know, there's only a few of them on there on YouTube. Uh, if you've sifted through everything that Westside and Louis has to say, and you've found that he talks too fast all the time, and you just need a, a little bit more of an explanation, then this one's for you. A few, what would you call it, assumptions. So you got conjugate method, conjugate and you've got west side. West side. Good start. Can't even read that, but that's fine. So the difference between conjugate and west side, uh, west side is what they do at west side barbell, and that is towards geared powerlifting. So the, the movements they choose and the, the amount of work they do is gonna be different to just conjugate. Conjugate means, like I said before, to me, this is what conjugate means, speed work, Dynamic effort day, max effort, so heavy lifting, uh, the max effort upper, max effort lower, and rotating through exercises. Rotating through exercises. So not doing the same lifts week after week after week, like you might do for a raw powerlifting comp. You should probably do some type of free weight squat almost every week or even twice a week leading up to a meet. And that works for lots of people. That's great, you need to practice that skill. Remember this video is for strongman and in strongman there is no rules that every competition you're going to be deadlifting from the same height, on the same bar, for the same amount of reps if you're even deadlifting at all in that competition. So first reason why conjugate makes sense for strongman I believe is because you're, you're already rotating exercise and building strength in uh, all different positions and that's literally what we do in competition in strongman so I believe that makes the most sense. I'm gonna assume you know what speed work is and you know what max effort is and that you know why we rotate exercises to build strength in different areas and also to avoid overuse injuries. So we can scratch that. This video is going to be about dynamic effort lower body. Uh, what day is it today? Today's Wednesday here in Melbourne. Dynamic effort lower body. I'm gonna start the video here or the first part of the series here. Dynamic effort lower body for us and me is every Monday. It is the, the most important day of the week, I believe. It is the day where we're working on technique, force output, fitness, and muscle building. So it is the hardest day of the week. Here at Vic Strength, everyone would agree. Uh, and I'm gonna show you just a few guidelines, they're not even rules, but how we structure dynamic effort lower body. So first up, you have to use bands. You're deadlifting with bands or chains. I definitely prefer bands. If you don't have access to bands, I would follow different percentages or just do rep work instead of speed work on dynamic effort lower body. So remember, if you're doing deadlifts and squats on Monday at 75 to 80%, and on Thursday you're expected to max out on something lower body, you, you might last a week or two doing that. Uh, but that's just way too much fatigue. So deadlifting with bands or even squatting with bands allows you to lift a little bit lighter but still give 100% effort. And I don't pull up sore from speed work. No one here pulls up sore from speed work. We pull up sore from the stuff that we do after it, but speed work's actually quite easy. 
even though the intent is still 100%. So you have to use bands. If you don't have access to bands, order them online, super cheap. I've got a video on how to set them up on normal bars, deficits, snatch grip, all that type of stuff. So search that video. And there's probably a bunch of other videos out there as well. So speed work works in three week waves. What does that mean? Well, I'm assuming you know already, but you're doing the same movement for three weeks in a row, getting slightly heavier each week. So linear progression, you should know it as, and conjugate programming is supposed to be non-linear, but there are parts of the programming like this that are linear, you're just adding weight each week. In conjugate, we do it for three weeks. Uh, Louis says that after three weeks, the body starts to adapt and it will not necessarily go, get stronger for the next week. That might be different from person to person. Maybe you can stretch it out to six weeks. Regardless, we change every three weeks. We change something about the lift. So here's just a few examples. Uh, let's assume that you've got 12 weeks to prep for the next comp. And let's go with me for Arnold's coming up soon. So we've got the Arnold's in two and a bit months or something. Uh, and that is an axle deadlift for reps. So here's what I might do for my speed work. My first three week wave. How will I write this? Let's go. I'm just going to do deadlift DL with bands, just a standard deadlift, normal bar, and the bands that I have add 60 kilos at the top. Week one, I do 50% of my max on the bar. The bands add 25%, which is 75% at the top. Week two, 55% plus 25% bands. 80% at the top and week three I do 60% which plus the 25% band tension is 85% at the top so the weights are very light on the bar 50 55 and 60% the bands get it up to a more respectable weight so at the top of the movement my traps my glutes and hamstrings are still giving a hundred percent effort really because if you don't try if you've ever used bands if you don't put 100% effort into those bands, it whips you back down. So at the bottom, my lower back's only exposed to a quite a light weight, which is why we don't pull up too sore from this stuff. But the intent needs to be 100% on bands, which is what I love about it. So that's a three week wave. Week four, I would change something about this. So I might go, you can really choose anything. Sumo deadlift for three weeks, if I believe that my hips need to be stronger. Uh, and I do the same thing, 50% of my max sumo deadlift on week one, 55% on week two, and so on. I do that for weeks four, five, and six, and then at week seven, I'll change something up again. Maybe I start getting the axle out to get used to the way I like to strap up, or just the feel of the axle. And then week four, I mean weeks uh, like the fourth block might be uh, from a raised height, I might raise it up on some blocks so it's a little bit higher, and I might do a stiff leg rack pull or something like that. There really is no wrong. It would be dependent person to person where your weaknesses are. And that's your percentages for speed work. Okay, 50% on the bar, 55 and 60. Hopefully the bands add about 25%. So this would be true for me. The 60 kilo bands, my max at the moment in training might be around 270. So 25% of 270 is a bit more than 60. What would it be? 8, 16, 24. Maybe 70, 7, 14, yeah, 68, 67 kilos or something would be 25%. So 60 kilos of bands is pretty close. You don't have to be spot on with this kind of stuff. Now the rep ranges that you will use for speed work, very important. So if you follow, if we go by Prilipin's chart, if you don't know what Prilipin's chart is, I'm not gonna explain it in this video. Google it and YouTube it. It was, I believe it was based on weightlifters. So they found out roughly how many reps and how many sets we're needed at each percentage to get strength gains. So I'm gonna skip over this part a little bit, let you figure that out if you don't know much about the chart. But it suggests that in the 75 and 80% range, a good amount of reps to hit, or well, the top amount of reps that you wanna hit is 24 in a session. So five by five is a very common rep range. That's 25 reps, that's around there. Uh, six by four would fall right into it. So that's how many reps that we wanna do with that percentage to get some strength gains. 85% it drops a little bit and the top amount of reps that we wanna hit is 20. That doesn't mean if you hit more than that, those amount of reps in a session that you've done too much, 
but it might not be worth it. It's not like doing more is better. Now you're eating into your recovery time and your training time as well. So uh, we always just stick to this and the way we break it up is based on what's coming up at the next competition. So if I wanna hit 24 reps, that's 75%, so I've got 55, sorry, 50% on the bar, 25% in bands, and I wanna hit 24 total reps, we would very often do 12 sets of two. You could do 24 sets of one rep. That might make sense to some people if you're training for a one RM, because what's important is just walking up to the bar, learning your setup, if it's a strongman comp, then um, learning how to strap up and create force from that very first rep. I've never done this. We always do sets of two or three. So 12 by two is better for this, I believe. Because you're using bands, the first rep will be okay, be quite fast, hopefully. You're gonna get pulled down by those bands and your second rep very often, almost all the time, is going to be faster. It's called overspeed eccentrics. So the, the band brings you back down faster than what you'd be able to come down without it. And you use the almost a stretch reflex to come up faster on the second rep. So if we're training speed, then I wanna train fast. I wanna be able to hit fast reps. So that's why we'll do sets of two to three. So another rep range here on the 24 reps could be eight sets of three. That's really great in the classes that we do here because now each person is only setting up eight times instead of 12. You could even stretch it to six by four. Now we're delving into a little bit of endurance and what do we need at the Arnold Axel deadlift for reps? A little bit of endurance. So when I was talking about the, the waves before, the first waves, maybe I'm doing 12 by twos. And then as it gets closer to the comp, maybe I'm doing less sets and more reps per set. And that way I'm getting a little bit of fitness work in. Uh, and that's why conjugate is so great for strongman because you do need max strength and you need to always be increasing your max strength. You also need the endurance, learning how to breathe into the belt and timing of your reps. If you're going for five reps in a minute, then you're not gonna try and get those five reps done in, in five seconds or anything like that. You're gonna try and space it out. So conjugate and speed work allows us to train those different facets of training as well. Um, Week two, when it goes uh, 80%, we'd still stick with the same rep ranges, 12 by two or eight by three. The third week of the wave, we drop down to 20 reps. So instead of doing 12 sets of two, we could do 10 sets of two or five sets of four, four sets of five. There's no right or wrong, it's just different and you'll wanna do a little bit of everything throughout your years of training. Hopefully that explains that a little bit. That is what we do for deadlifts and we deadlift with bands every Monday. We just change the stimulus. So axles or normal bars, deficit deadlift with bands, block pulls with bands, snatch deadlift with bands, sumo deadlift, anything that you can think of just to train differently. Train a, uh, a different part of your body to get slightly stronger. Another reason why this is fantastic is you're not just training for your deadlift. There's a reason why everyone here is doing well at overhead movements. So we've got big deadlifters, big overhead presses, everyone's doing really well with stones. When you're training speed deadlifts, you're training force output. You're tr teaching your body how to apply force to the ground and contract all muscles as fast as it can. That comes to fruition or that shows in cleans snatches, stones, stone to shoulder, log cleans, triple extension for push presses and jerks. You're training your glutes, you're training your biggest movers how to be fast and how to apply strength. Uh, so this is one of my biggest secrets as to why we've kept doing conjugate or why we've kept doing speed work here when there's an array of info out there saying that it's no good. The results that I've seen in myself and others when you're deadlifting with bands and squatting with bands as well, it teaches you how to get better at other things. So remember, when you're training for strongman, if you've got five events coming up at your next comp, deadlift with bands can help, obviously, with your deadlift, your stone pickup and load. Maybe it's gonna help your farmer's pickup or just take those first few steps a little bit faster, your reaction time slightly faster. There's just so many things that you're working when you're doing speed deadlifts or banded deadlifts. After the deadlifts, we'll often move on to power cleans, just normal power cleans without bands, and we'll mix it up, squat cleans, power cleans, hang cleans, hang power squat snatch cleans with a false grip. We just mix it up all the time and do a bit of everything. We do a lot of stone or dead ball to shoulder on this day, and every now and then we will do box squats and banded box squats. 
They're my favorite move ever for strongman. They're my favorite exercise ever. Um, we just don't do them as much. We do them leading into a competition is what I'm trying to say. We don't do them year round or all through a cycle. Uh, and that's just mainly because of the setup time and the skill needed for the box squat in a class setting. It's just easy to get the deadlifts in and then move on to other things. Um, I think that's about everything that I wanted to cover in this first video. That's gone a little bit longer than I wanted, but I've had that little bit of an intro, so the subsequent videos should be a bit shorter. If you've got more questions, which I'm sure you do, please send them through. And I forgot to mention what we do after this, sorry. After this, you go into your rep work. So you hit your hamstrings with high reps, you hit your glutes, quads, all your lower body movements with, um, with high reps, pretty lightweight to grow some muscle. Here in the class setting, we do it in a circuit, very CrossFit-like, so we're working on fitness as well as explosiveness. Box jumps are a big one on Mondays. Sled work is a big one on Mondays. If you've got a competition coming up with farmers carry or yoke, it's a good chance to do some light work to practice fast feet, fast turnarounds. Uh, grip work can be a great one added to here as well. So like I said before, Mondays are the biggest and hardest day here, and therefore I believe the most important. All right, like I was saying, send us any questions and I'll get video two up as soon as I can.